What? That was so embarrassing. <laughs> Welcome to the Bougie Fidoshi channel. For those who know me, hello again. For those who don't, I hope you stick around because today I'm calling this my hiatus manga haul. Because over the past few months, I've put this channel on pause for my semester, but by no means does that mean that I stopped reading my manga. So this video, we're just going to be covering all the titles that I've read since I've been gone. Sound good, class? Let's get into it. So to start us off, we have a good old Shonen Jump title. I picked up volumes 24 through 31 of Slam Dunk by Takahiko Inoue Sensei. Why I tell you these covers are iconic, like, would y'all look at these? <laughs> I love to see it. I had to talk about Slam Dunk first because this was the best decision of my life. So a while back, I had started reading from where the anime adaptation left off, which is around volume 23 or so. I ended up going ahead and getting the rest from In Stock Trades. I absolutely loved reading the rest of this series and finally getting to know how it ends. I understand that it's a little bit more difficult to get into a sports manga versus a sports anime, but every volume had me on the edge of my seat, so I had to keep going. I still hope that I'll be able to eventually get the earlier volumes, but the volume four cover will always have a special place in my heart. Next up, we have volume one of Zom 100. The story is by Haro Aso Sensei, and the art is by Kotaro Takata Sensei. This story is the perfect blend of survival and comedy. I'm not a big zombie fan, but this, this the one. The main character's name is Akira and he is absolutely everything. Akira is really coming to the edge when it comes to his job and just life in general. And one day he just wakes up and the city is swarming with zombies. And even though an apocalypse seems like a bad thing, that just means Akira doesn't have to go to work anymore. I honestly have never read anything like this before so I cannot wait to see more from this series. And volume two is actually coming out pretty soon. So you will definitely be seeing more Akira in the future. Next up, we have volumes 10 and 11 of Beastars by Paru Itagaki Sensei, and also the first volume of Sensei's Beast Complex. Volume 10 was a lot, but volume 11? After the first season of the anime ended, I started to pick up Beastars again. Since Netflix is the one that streams Beastars, it won't be internationally available until like July, I think. And I know right now it's only about two months away, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> and I'm glad that I did go ahead and keep reading it. Y'all thought the first season was wild? <laughs> no. No! For Beast Complex, it's actually a collection of short stories by Itagaki Sensei. When I first started the series and up until now, I'm always fascinated with how Itagaki Sensei builds their world in this series. Next, we have Volume 7 of Blue Flag by Kaito Sensei. For anybody who's thinking about starting the Blue Flag series, definitely look into trigger warnings beforehand because Blue Flag hits on some very important yet heavy topics. I started reading it on the Shonen Jump app because I have a subscription. So I was able to read the first six volumes on there before I decided to get the physical one. And the only reason why I got the physical of volume seven is because I could not wait for them to put it in the vault. But y'all, oh my God. Gosh, this story? I feel like every character this story, not just the main ones, are written extremely well to me. If you were thinking about starting Blue Flag before and you've read into it a little bit of what it's about, this just might be the sign for you to go ahead and pick it up. I think you can at least read the first chapter for free on the Shonen Jump site. So if you're thinking about picking up Blue Flag, go ahead and look into it because I absolutely love it. Do you like jazz? Well, I definitely do. I got volumes one to four of Blue Giant by Shinichi Ichizuka Sensei. Each omnibus contains two of the volumes in the series and it's licensed by Seven Seas Entertainment. I have such a deep and personal connection when it comes to music, both playing and listening to it in general. This series definitely tugged at my emotional heartstrings. Blue Giant is the story of Dai on his journey to become the greatest jazz player in the world. And y'all know that's not an easy feat for any genre of music. This series has won multiple awards and I can definitely see why. And there was actually a collaboration for Blue Giant Explorer and Spotify, a playlist that you can listen to that's inspired by the story. And yes, I listen to it while I read the volumes. Next up, we have volumes one and two of We Swore to Meet in the Next Life and that's when things got weird. This is by Hato Hachiya Sensei. This story. <laughs> So in a previous life, Yuko was a princess and Harold was her knight. Haven't learned 
learn too much about how their lives came to an end. But since Yuko was a princess and Harold was a knight, they could not be together. And like the title suggests, they swore that in their next life they would meet again. Both of these characters love each other so much and their love clearly stands the test of time. I don't know how many volumes are in this series, but I am definitely interested to see where it goes. Next up, we have Superwoman in Love by Sometime Sensei. Honey Trap is a villain and Rapid Rabbit is a superhero. One night, these two are duking it out. And when Honey Trap takes off Rapid Rabbit's mask, she finds out that sis is just her type. That's my type. Honey Trap is absolutely head over heels for Rapid Rabbit. And I do not blame her at all. After volume one, I definitely feel like this will be a rom-com for the books. The final volume of Goodbye My Rose Garden by Dr. Pepperco Sensei. Y'all already know how much I love Goodbye My Rose Garden. And when I tell y'all I was literally in my bed crying over this final volume. I just adore them so much and I really hope that I get to see more of Sensei's work because this... <laughs> Pikachu Ohi Sensei's Our Teachers Are Dating Volume 1. Hayama Sensei is a gym teacher. And Terano Sensei is a science teacher. And even though they're a little shy about their relationship, the whole school staff is just rooting for these two. And so am I. I need to get the second volume, but it's always out of stock. But I can't wait for more lessons in love. Next, we have Asumiko Nakamura's A White Rose in Bloom Volume 1. You might be wondering, hmm, where have I heard that name before? I'll give the class to the count of three. One, two, three. Ta-da! Classmates! This is a love story between Ruby and Steph at their elite boarding school. And I really like the design of their uniforms in this series. Back in like the early 2000s, I remember being obsessed with boarding school and I don't know why. It was probably Zoe 101 now that I think about it. So it's Christmas time and while everybody is going back home to their families, they have to stay on campus. And the sparks start to fly. I'm a fan of Sensei's works already. And I'm so glad that this has been licensed in English so I can't wait for the next volumes. Next we have Kata Konayama Sensei's Love Me For Who I Am Volume 1. So this series is definitely a first for me because on the cover here, we have Mogumo, and Mogumo is a non-binary maid. The place that Mogumo is working at is an untraditional maid cafe, and all the employees that work there have a different story as to why they work at the maid cafe. I want to say there's about three volumes out right now. I really like the first volume, so I need to go ahead and pick those up. Volume three of BL Metamorphosis by Kaori Sudutani Sensei. I absolutely love the dynamic between these two in BL Metamorphosis, and I think that the fourth volume is already out, so I'm behind right now, but we can change that. I have finally gotten my hands on volume two of My Androgynous Boyfriend by Tameko Sensei. Everybody who has read this series knows that Megaru is the moment. The face and the fit are always on point without fail. I absolutely love Sensei's art style and just all of their work in general. And I think that volume three is supposed to be coming out pretty soon. So y'all will definitely be seeing more of Megaru in the future. Waka Hiroko Sensei's My Broken Mariko. I would definitely say look into trigger warnings for my broken Mariko before starting the story. I remember when this first came out and a lot of people were talking about it and giving their reviews on the story. I think that once I read it, I was left in more of a state of disbelief rather than sadness. But I don't want to get too deep into it because I don't want to spoil it for anybody that's thinking about picking it up. However, I would definitely like to see more of Hiroko Sensei's works in the future. I Cannot Reach You Volume 1 by Mika Sensei. This has to be the softest childhood friends trope ever. And I want to say that it's been a hot minute since I've read anything that has this trope involved. I don't know when Volume 2 is supposed to be out or if it's out already, but there's a tiny little twist in Volume 1 that makes me want to read Volume 2. We can see what's going on in there. Love of Kill Volume 1 by Fe Sensei. It's giving very Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but not at the same time because these two are not together at all. I know that song is supposed to be the bad guy, but he is hilarious to me. And Chateau is one of those very like stone faced characters. And when it comes to fictional relationship dynamics where one person is super happy and bubbly all the time and the other one is just. I love to see it. And y'all already know I'm ready to see where this goes. Next up, we have Shoharu Sano Sensei, Sasaki, and Miyano. Now, a while back, they made the announcement that this series is supposed to be getting an anime adaptation. So I put off reading it for a little bit, but they really just dropped that and left because it has been radio silent, which is why I decided to go ahead and keep reading the series. I really enjoy this series so far, and the side characters always have some flavor to throw into the mix. 
So I'll definitely keep reading and y'all already know that I'm gonna be watching the anime when it comes out. This next one is so funny. <laughs> Volume one of Life Lessons with Uramichi Onisan by Gaku Kuze Sensei. <laughs> this actually contains the first two volumes of this series. Uramichi is a 31 year old host on a kids show where he leads exercise routines and also gives his life lessons to these kids. And the main theme that comes across all of these life lessons that our lovely Uramichi Onisan loves to give is that adulthood sucks. And I agree. A lot of the life lessons that he gives hits a little too hard for me. This manga is actually getting ready to have its anime adaptation in the summer season. And the person that's going to be voicing our lovely Uramichi Onisan is none other than Hiroshi Kamiya. And if you're into anime, you have most likely heard his voice before. Nampo from Bungo Stray Dogs, Levi from Attack on Titan. The resume is thick, okay? The first preview trailer came out for the anime and I I was already on the floor. I should have expected anything less from how great the first volume was because I was cracking up the entire time. So, if you can't already tell, um, I'll be watching it. <laughs> Next up, we have volume one of Star Cross by Junko Sensei. Azusa is a diehard stand for Chika, who is a part of an idol group called Prince For You. The albums, the merch, the light sticks, the shirt, she got it all. It's the night of the latest show and she has front row tickets. And y'all, when they're performing the song, the stage lights start falling. I don't know what came over Azusa, but she leaps up on that stage to try and save Chika's life. And y'all, they both die. <laughs> I know this is a spoiler, but it says it on the back of the book and it happens in like the first chapter. But that's not even the wild part, class. They get up to the pearly gates and God's like, oops. It was not Chika and Azusa's time to be from this earth. So God is kind enough to give these two a second chance, but there's a mix up. When the two of them come back to life, Chika is in Azusa's body and Azusa is in Chika's body. Y'all, the stress. <laughs> I feel like calling this story a roller coaster does not cover it. But nonetheless, I love to see it. I finally got my hands on volume two of Whisper Me a Love Song by Eku Takeshima Sensei. The plot is getting thick, okay? It's thick. I just need them to go ahead and release volume three because my heart can't take it. Volume one of Mone Sarai's Are Not So Lonely Planet travel guide. So here's the plan. Asahi and Mitsuki are going to get married, but first, it's time for a trip around the world. In the first volume, they end up going to Thailand, India, and Georgia. I feel like I'm vicariously living through this manga as they hop from country to country. And the art style for this series is so beautiful and intricate. Overall, the concept of this story is very interesting to me, so I can't wait to see where it goes. Next up is a one-shot called The Cat Proposed by Dento Hayane Sensei. Another story that features an overworked salary man. Makoi is tired. One night he goes to see a traditional Japanese play and the person that's performing that night turns out to be a shape-shifting cat which is known in Japanese folklore as a bakaneko. The way that Matoi figures this out is because when he was watching him on stage, he saw his cat ears. And amongst the bakaneko, that is a big no-no. So now that Matoi knows his secret, he has to be his mate. I honestly just saw the ad for this and bought it without even reading the back like I usually do. So I honestly did not expect the story to be like this at all. I personally love the anime descending stories. And before reading this, I didn't know about Kodan's storytelling. So when I was reading the first chapter, I was like, wait a minute! But unlike the humorous stories that are mainly found in Rakugo, Kodan's storytelling focuses more on historical wars and revenge and just human compassion. But it was cool to learn something new about the different types of storytelling that's out there. And their little story along the way was adorable to boot. So I'm really glad that I picked up a cat propose. It's finally here! Final volume in the I Hear the Sunspot series by Yuki Fumino Sensei. I've already told y'all before how much I love I Hear the sunspot. I got it all over here and I mentioned before that I was gonna cry and I did. There was an announcement from the creator that they will still be continuing their story which I am so glad to hear. I really hope that One Piece books will be able to license it in English because I already miss them. Getting into some shoujo beat titles. I got volumes 9 and 10 of Sonata Akiduki Sensei's Snow White with the Red Hair. Shirayuki Hira! 
Y'all know how much I love my Obi cover, okay? I love him. Now I have a Shirayuki cover and the Zen cover. And the most recent cover has Zen and Obi on it. I eat so well in this house. After reading volumes 9 and 10, I knew I had to just go ahead and get the rest to catch up with the series, which will hopefully be coming in soon. But y'all, I love this story so much. I will recommend this from here to the moon and back. Watch the anime, read the manga, play the opening, the ending, both of them. I love to see it. I got volumes 12 to 15 of Yona of the Dawn by Mizuho Kusanagi Sensei. Listen, when this cover came in the mail, Period. This scene in particular was also so cool to me, watching Yona pop off like that. Go ahead with your little sword dance, girl. I realized for me, I have to be in a mood to read Yona of the Dawn. Cause for a while I got it and it was just sitting there staring at me. And then one weekend I was like, you know what? I feel like reading Yona. I wanna see them. So once the mood strikes me again, I'll go ahead and pick up some more volumes. But in comparison to where it currently is for the English print, I've definitely got a long ways to go. <laughs> what would be a manga haul if I didn't have some Iosaki Saka Sensei? I picked up volume seven and six of Love Me Love Me Not. Y'all, I'm about to just give up and go ahead and buy the Japanese Blu-ray of this movie. I just want to see them in action so bad, y'all. Like, does no one want to secure this Birkin bag? I just feel like if they've done it once, they could do it again. Moving on, we're finally starting to see some developments between the ships in this story. At least one of the ships in this story is finally taking off. I'm not gonna spoil it for anybody who's thinking about reading it. But I need the other one to go ahead and lift the anchor and come on. Volume one of Takane and Hana by Yuki Shiwasu Sensei. The reason why I got this title is because I remember seeing some type of announcement about collector's edition for I think the final volume. And I was like, huh, this sounds interesting. I'll go ahead and give it a try. But if I'm being honest, it didn't really click for me. And even though it was cute, I don't think I'm going to be getting volume two anytime soon. Our time has come. Volume five of Given by Natsuki Kizu Sensei. Volume five actually came out around the same time that Crunchyroll started streaming the English sub version of the movie. And my copy came in after I'd already watched the movie on Crunchyroll. So it was kind of funny to read it and it ended in the same place. If you would like some more of my ramblings on this whole Aki Haru arc. You can check out my blog post on WordPress. I need volume six to go ahead and come out. And based off of the original cover alone, I need to know what happens. For those looking to start the Given series, even though it is rated older teen, I would highly suggest looking into trigger warnings before starting this series. But now we're moving into some titles for our more mature readers. The following titles that I'm about to talk about are rated M for Mature, which means that you have to be 18 or older to purchase and or read these titles. In the spirit of continuing series, Kotetsuko Yamamoto Sensei's Toditan Birds of a Feather Volume 2, The Birds. <laughs> What seems like ages ago now, I made my Sublime Manga Haul video that covers the first volume of Toritan Birds of a Feather. Very glad to have gotten the second volume as well to continue this story. And thanks to the Futakia Library, I've actually been able to read some more of Sensei's works. But I definitely give it to Sublime Manga for putting me onto Sensei's works. Next up is a title from a mangaka that I absolutely adore. Jealousy Volume 3 by Scarlet Beniko Sensei. And I'm pretty sure that I mentioned it before that I started with Fourth Generation Head before getting into Jealousy since this is the prequel to that story. But if I'm being honest, I don't really think that you necessarily need Fourth Generation Head in order to start Jealousy. But it is interesting to think back to Uichi's character in Fourth Generation Head in comparison to Jealousy. Cause child, what happened? <laughs> That's what we're here to find out. If Sensei ever decided to just do a story on Akitora's wife, I don't know what I would do. I would just ascend. It's clear that I love to see it. So yes, I will be hitting send to shopping cart on volume four. Another third volume, Renmaru Zarya Sensei's Coyote volume three, the story. The inks, the spice, it's all there. And Sensei hasn't disappointed me yet. So I'll definitely be looking to get volume four in the future. Now this next title that I'm about to show is a purchase and read at your own risk. And make sure that you look into it before you get it. 
MADK by Ryo Suzuri Sensei. MADK is a venture that one must choose for themselves and that experience will be individualized to them. If I'm really being honest with the class here, nothing could have prepared me for MADK. Nothing. However, comma, what we're not going to do is flex on Sensei, okay? Sensei's art style, beyond. Beyond! I really wonder what the room looked like when they proposed to have this licensed in English. I never read a story like this in my life, but you can bet your bottom dollar that I'm gonna be getting volume two. The long-awaited volume four of Twittering Birds Never Fly by Ko Yoneda Sensei. Twittering Birds Never Fly still takes the cake as the most angstiest story I have ever consumed. I honestly haven't even looked to see when five and six are supposed to come out in the English print, but with the way four ended, y'all already know I'm gonna have to hit send the shopping cart. Volume 9 of Hitori Jime My Hero by Memeko Adi Sensei. I have seen the anime adaptation for Hitori Jime My Hero and a while back I did decide to go ahead and start from the beginning of the series and read up until now. So now I'm caught up with the series over the past few months volume 9 did come out and I think that volume 10 is supposed to be coming out pretty soon. The last title in my hiatus manga haul is An Incurable Case of Love Volume 7 by Maki and Joji Sensei. I know you're probably gonna be like, what's the Shoujo B title doing in there? Listen here, class. These two began freaking. <laughs> Would you look at how colorful these spines are? I'm so happy that I started reading this series a while back and also that I've seen it through to the end. In one of my first videos, I talked about an incurable case of love and how it kind of reminded me of Itazuru Kiss. So every time I read it, I always remember the ending song. <laughs> But if you were waiting for an incurable case of love to be out fully, it is now. So that's it. I know y'all probably looking at my shelf like, girl, what happened? But I actually have some news for the class. I finally got in the shelf for all of my tall spines. I started struggling to find space on this shelf, especially since they aren't deep enough for me to double stack them. So I'm so glad that I have this shelf now. But that covers everything for my hiatus manga haul. I'm so happy to be able to make videos and share and just gush about all this manga that I've been reading and honestly just being able to have time to make videos in general. But thank you so much for watching. If you like what you're today, make sure you hit that like, subscribe before you leave. But that's all I have for today. So bye!